So I got a call from uh, Jimmy's family, his dad actually, I think it was the day after he was shot. He was shot on January 22nd of 2019. And um, the family had been on the scene of the shooting. They had been on the scene all day trying to get information about what happened to Jimmy. Um, they had been asking questions, trying to figure out who they could talk to to get information, and they were literally being ignored by just about every law enforcement agency on the scene. So from beginning, really until this day, and we're almost six months in, our mission has been to one, find out the truth about what happened to Jimmy, and two, hold the officer accountable uh, who murdered him. And the information that was provided was that they were there to execute and serve this armed robbery warrant on Jimmy. So there are members of this uh, FBI task force, some of them are FBI agents, some of them are Atlanta police officers, and then there's some other agencies who are also represented. They show up um, at the Allen Hills apartment complex, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, and there are kids who are getting ready for school, they are making their way to the bus stop. Um, it is an average, you know, Tuesday morning in this community um, when this task force essentially descends upon this apartment complex, uh, almost military style. They have these um, military style assault rifles. Uh, there are quite a number of them. Um, they are in many different cars. Uh, and, you know, folks at the apartment complex describe seeing these officers, you know, coming into the apartment, uh, coming onto the property and um, being really terrified because they weren't sure exactly what was going on. Um, all of this to serve what we would typically refer to as a run-of-the-mill armed robbery allegation it's, is what a warrant is. It's an allegation. It's not proof that you did it. It means someone said you did it. So they are here to serve this armed robbery warrant. Um, the information we have is that Jimmy at some point took off running. He was unarmed. There's no claim that he was ever armed, uh, which makes this even more of a mystery to us. Uh, but he runs. Eventually, he ends up hiding in someone's closet, a friend's closet in another apartment. Um, the officers learn he is in there, um, make entry into the apartment command him to come out um, of the closet. And as he is complying with their command, Officer Sun Kim shoots him at fairly close range, uh, one time in the face, killing him. There were no guns found around him. There were no weapons found anywhere near him. And uh, no one has claimed that he was armed even though uh, for a long time the FBI refused to admit that he was unarmed. There is no evidence that he was armed. So essentially you have this young man being shot in the face unarmed while he is attempting to comply with the commands um, of law enforcement. So one of the things that we wanted to look at pretty quickly was this armed robbery claim. Um, his family was adamant that Jimmy did not commit this armed robbery um, and that it was bogus. And so we started to investigate it. Myself and our investigators tracked down the police report, tracked down the witness uh, to the armed robbery, um, Lynn McFashion, and we interviewed her. She was kind enough to speak to us. And Lynn told us a story that was completely different than what was set forth in this in this police report. And I still don't know, you know, exactly what she said in order for them to come and get a warrant because they came to my house. They took me to headquarters. They asked me a thousand questions about what happened and I told them over and over again, you know, he didn't have a gun, he didn't rob her. Well, of course they were on her side because she's the one that went first. I just think it was kind of blown out of proportion. But no, he didn't have a gun. He didn't rob her. Um, and I let APD know that, you know, they should have did a better investigation as far as somebody just accusing another person of robbing him. He, he asked her to use her phone because he was supposed to be selling some pants. 
Jimmy borrowed her phone and walked off with it. That's essentially what happened. There was no gun involved. There was no fight involved. There was no argument involved. Um, but this girl became angry at Jimmy because she thought that he perhaps knew more about what had happened to her in the days before. Perhaps he wasn't telling her everything that he knew about the people who actually did rob her. And so she essentially converted this phone incident into an armed robbery, and it was a complete fabrication. It's just so crazy how you can just accuse somebody of doing something and the law just, you know, go right with whatever someone says. You know, they didn't have any proof that he robbed her. They just had proof that, you know, he took the phone. They didn't have any proof that he robbed her with a gun or anything, you know. And then she went two days later after the phone was taken, so I just felt like she was out to get somebody, but it was the wrong person. Things were like following myself because I felt like if I would have never brought her around, you know, this would have never happened to you. It hurt so bad because I know that he was scared, you know. I know he was scared. So. APD had two very conflicting stories about this so-called armed robbery and they just chose to go out and get a warrant without doing any kind of real investigation and as a result of that sloppiness um, and that laziness and that uh, cavalierness, you know, uh, Jimmy is not here today because if they had done that, if they had followed up like they should have, like they referenced in their police report, the need to follow up, uh, Jimmy would still be alive.